Hey buddies, Potetabic Whiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 in the Dinosaur Arabia game. Unfortunately, no more dinosaurs will be appearing in this game because it's no longer the ancient era and dinosaurs just don't appear beyond the ancient era. I don't know what else to tell you, right? I thought there'd be dinosaurs practically raining from the sky for the entire game, but that's just not the case. But we did get to have fun with dinosaurs. The dinosaurs stole people's builders. We got to fight dinosaurs. We got to do all sorts of great and brilliant things with them. Let's grab ourselves a temple and it is finally time. It is The day has come that we settle our religion. Now, we're not going to settle it right now because I want to talk a little bit about what happened in the last episode. In the last episode, we managed to get the Casa de Contracion, which means we now have a full complement of governors. And if you combine that with our audience chamber, we're getting a full four housing and two amenities in every city that we have an established governor. Now, I could in theory assign a Manny to a city-state if I wanted to get like suzerainty or like some extra power there or something. I'm, I'm a little bit less enamored with that idea. I would like to maybe build a relationship with things like candy because um, it's a little bit of extra faith. I'd rather use a Manny as a way for me to, to um, fire the 15% production gold and faith in Tokyo. So I'm going to assign a Manny there. I would just rather use her for that. She's a, she's a governor stick. That's all she does. It is her entire purpose. I will be putting a governor into a Lepsa as well. My governors are especially valuable uh, in cities outside of my continent, even though these cities over here are theoretically my best cities. Because I have the Casa de Contracion, any city outside of Pangaea will get a 15% boost to their production, gold, and faith if I have a governor in them. So that just seems really good for me. Um, I'll probably won't put a governor into Graulos. Which actually means that Victor will be going into Amazon, which was a city renamed by one of my viewers, Jess. Now, I am missing Geneva, so where are they? Could I send them a trade route? They may actually be in range for a trade route here. So that's something to consider. When is my next trade route becoming available? In nine turns. Oh, I'm just going to have to wait for that one. So... I got my coal, but it was where my encampment is, so no more, no more encampment for me. Bit of a sad day. We have the Giga Chattel Mega Apocalypse Eruption. Uh, we actually built a theater square with four or more, or three or more adjacency, which is fantastic. So with the completion of that theater square that we got three error score out of, I'd like to throw down an amphitheater. I think culture is my weakest sort of empire-wide yield right now. So every single little bit of culture that I can get is actually massive. It's like a huge boost. Plus, it opens up the possibility to maybe buy some great works of writing to get an extra four culture in this city. So an amphitheater, in theory, is actually more like seven culture baseline if you can pay for the great works of writing, which I will be doing because I want to get as much value from my cities as possible. We did get a boost towards divine right, and now, now it is time to found our religion. Boom, we activated it. We have settled our religion. Now, it's important to remember, when you found a religion and you have holy sites... Your religion will appear in every city where you have a holy site. And because I have, I think, four holy sites, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, four of my cities will instantaneously convert. And then I can use my apostles to start an inquisition. And I should be very easily be able to um, convert my entire empire to my religion and start getting the benefit of my religion. Unfortunately, though, this isn't going to be a very good religion. I actually kind of like being the sneaky boys. We'll be the uh, sneaky boys. We have a few options here. We could go for work ethic. Work ethic isn't terrible, but I haven't really gone for high holy site adjacency this game. So I feel like that would be a bit of a letdown. Zen meditation, I feel, plus one amenity in cities with two specialty districts really appeals to me here. We're building relatively tall. We have a lot of cities. Plus one amenity is pretty nice. Otherwise, it's religious community because that is worth basically six gold on all my international trade routes, which is pretty respectable. It's a pretty respectable amount of gold. Oh, actually, do you know what I should do? I should rename this. We will be the legless dinosaurs. That's what snakes are, right? The legless dinosaur. We worship the legless dinosaur. This is the dinosaur playthrough. So that's what we got to do. Yeah, I'm torn between religious community and Zen meditation. I'm not really trading internationally that much. So I don't feel like religious community is that amazing. I'm going to go for Zen meditation instead. I have Divine Spark, which is actually really helpful this game. I'm kind of tempted to go to double down on the Zen meditation and go for the Stupa. Yeah, let's grab the Stupa. This way we get two amenities from our religion, which it is it is a bit of a um, consolation prize. But you can see now uh, all of my cities that had holy sites were automatically converted to the religion of Legolas Dinosaur. Really, really, really important point that... Um, 
sometimes it's better to wait to settle your religion until you have the right stuff, you have the right setup for your cities. Which means we can activate and start purchasing stupas in all of our cities that have holy sites for 35 faith. It's a really good return on investment. Absolutely incredible return on investment. Because, don't forget, not only is this only 35 faith for a 190 production building, we're getting 3 faith and amenity and... Ding, 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 ding. Not only that, it's giving us a 10% boost to our science, culture and faith, I believe. So this is a huge building for us. It's going to really change the game. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. In fact, this city has a relatively large modifier to its to its faith yield. Like, look at that. It's getting 10% from amenities, 15% from modifiers and 10% from my religious building. That's brilliant. I'm, I've got a ton of faith. I got the temple in Jeddah. I do want to get a builder in here because I feel like... I have these tiles I need to improve. So I'll go for a builder. I'd like to get the bank because that's worth, you know, nine gold per turn, which is a significant amount of gold. So we'll go ahead and get to work on that bank. Albert Einstein is ready. Random tech research, boom. And now all of our research labs are better, which is fantastic. I'm super happy about that. Now, I'm going to be using my faith for a few things. The first thing I'm going to be doing is obviously buying stupas everywhere that it makes sense. But I'm also going to be grabbing... I need three apostles, so I'll grab two in my capital, and I'll grab the third one in Baghdad. Now, I wanted to go for the Great Zimbabwe, um, but I also need to, like, figure out... I, I need to get my consulate up and my chancery. I'm missing out on so many envoy points by not going for them. We got our factory in Amazon, and I think it's time we get our coal power plant. Being able to power my empire for research labs is going to be a big deal. We got our amphitheater in Baghdad. Let's see if anyone will sell me some stuff right we got ourselves a couple of mercury here how much for great works i'd like some great works of writing the perfect world two gold per turn for montezuma i'll grab that's a steal if i ever did see one uh 13 gold per turn off of trajan that's also a good price and i think that's all the room for great works i have but this is important because these are worth two culture each it's significant why is this one worth four does anyone understand why this one in tokyo is worth four like, it just is worth four. Four culture per turn. It's so odd. Uh, Baghdad has actually finished all of its infrastructure, which is kind of expected for a city with 53 production. Oh, I never considered the possibility of going for a Ruhr Valley here in Amazon. Now I, now I feel like I have to do it. Yeah, now I feel like I have to. Do I put it here? Or do I put it on where I want to put my commercial hub? I think I just give up the dream for a commercial hub and decide upon the Ruhr Valley. Um, I will get the coal power plant first, though, because the potential production from that is actually quite good. I'd love to get the dam. I, I, think, I think I have time to go for the dam as well. In fact, I could buy the coal power plant and then just work on the dam and then get myself a builder over here somehow. You, although you're, you're kind of being used. Ah, you can grab me a builder to be sending over. And I wanted you to get a spy. Spy then builder. We'll do it in that order. Ooh, no, no, no. Builder then spy because we want to finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want to finish the International um, Intelligence Agency first. So we've got a monument and granary in Gararlos. I reckon it's a builder next so we can improve the city's tiles. We have our first apostle. Now, apostles, I believe, start with three charges. So we have two free spreads with this guy before we need to evangelize. And we can actually pick up proselytizer here, which is perfect. Or proselytizer, I guess, is the way you're supposed to say it. And I'll take proselytizer on this guy as well. And then on this lad, I will go ahead and take debater. Well, I don't have to do that. I will spread my religion. I get to do that twice with each of my guys because I have plus two bonus spreads. Thanks to the era, uh, the golden age that I'm in. So I can do that twice before I actually have to use them. So I get a little bit more value out of these guys. Lovely. We are now officially burning coal, which is a huge amount of production. Like if I go here to Baghdad, it's actually getting six production from a factory, um, which is basically like having plus one population in this city. You know, a lot of people, and I'm not calling out anyone in specific, except for a guy who actually has stopped streaming and his name was The Game Mechanic. He was arguably the best Civ 6 streamer, um, but he hasn't streamed in a while. Um, he used to think that industrial zones were trash, but I really, really, really disagree with him. I think industrial zones are bloody well brilliant if you can hit enough cities because it's like having an extra tile being worked in all it's like having plus one population in all those cities in terms of production like this this workshop this factory here is hitting six cities right six times six it produces six production it hits six cities that's 36 production what what building in the entire game that could potentially Give you 36 production, do people say is trash? 
Like, let's be real, right? And it gives you coveted, difficult to get, great engineer points. These are very uncompetitive categories, um, the, uh, the engineer is. I don't know. I think it is valid to ignore. I think it is totally valid to, to, ignore, um, to ignore industrial zones. But I feel like they're good enough to build. I feel like they're good enough to build. Maybe I'm wrong. But we're spreading our religion now. And we are going to have problems with our religion because Sikhism completely surrounds us. But once we have our Inquisition, we'll have a much easier time getting our religion established. Lovely. There's economics. I would maybe consider building the Big Ben this game. And Pedro has captured Caguana. This is a tough one because I kind of want to go to war with Pedro. I have the infantry. I could potentially have the oil. I could potentially push for artillery. Let, let, let's have a quick think about this, right? If I go for ballistics, military science, rifling refining that's uh 13 turns 15 turns i can get a rifling refining pretty quick get oil get artillery throw artillery at brazil liberate some cities maybe yoink porto alegre liberate nazca the problem is these districts are just so disgustingly powerful 80 combat strength right now he has he's a huge military compared to me it's very tempting it's very tempting to go to war the question is, is it a distraction and can I pull it off? Like, I only have bombards now. I don't even have nationalism. And I'm not top science anymore. Although Eleanor doesn't even have a military. I'm going to declare war on someone to probably be her. It's tempting to go to war here, but I think I'm going to just leave it. I think I'll just give it a rest. I, uh, I won't submit that emergency. I'll, I'll maybe see if someone else does. We got our consulate at long last. We're getting two influence points per turn and we can get to work on our chancery now to get an extra three. This guy is down to three spreads, so that means it's time to evangelize. I'll use him to launch an inquisition, which will be worth an era score. This lad still has a couple of spreads left. So a spread religion, spread religion, boom, reform church, triggered, awesome. Need a little bit more era score. I don't know if I'm going to be able to nail the era score here. Um, I'd love to, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I'd love to hit another golden age. Because the possibility of Eleanor hitting a Dark Age here seems quite high to me. I mean, here's the thing. Where is Caguana? Caguana is all the way over here. I don't think there's another player in position to attack Brazil. Let's see, right? Canada could potentially vote yes, right? Canada could potentially vote yes. They're nowhere near liberating Caguana. Paris, France could potentially vote yes. They're nowhere near liberating Caguana. So I reckon that's it. That's, that's the decision. Vote down. Down vote. Thumbs down no on that it actually passed which is interesting but i'm not party to it it looks like korea rome and the ottomans are are are, are a party to this war maybe i should have jumped in who knows i don't know what's happening on this this side of the map though i have another governor title and it's time to use it we have a few options with regards to what we want to do i don't think i want to promote liang anymore i think i'm happy with the way that she is I could, in theory, promote Magnus with surplus uh, logistics and industrialists to get a little bit more power out of my industrial zone city. Kind of appeals to me. I could also pick up Connoisseur on Pingala, which I unfortunately had to delay very late. And I will pick that up because that's worth 12 culture per turn, which is a huge boost to my culture. I nearly, nearly got like, what? Jesus, with modifiers, 12 culture plus 25%. Nearly got 15 culture out of that, which is pretty solid. That's pretty feckin' solid. We, of course, finished the intelligence agency. So we have access to our first spy. And thanks to the spy UI mod, which you can find if you type best UI mods potato whiskey into YouTube, we can actually search and filter by commercial hubs and find people that we want to steal gold from. It looks like the only commercial hub that we know of is in Toronto. Are any, go any great people I could get? I could actually grab Giovanni de Medici here. That's worth see how long do i have i have four turns so if i grab giovanni that's one era score could i levy a city state 960 gold to levy a city state that would be worth that much um if i finish replaceable parts that would give me era score because it's the first tech from the modern era so that'll be a little bit so i reckon levying is the thing that I try to do. Whoever will give me the most just raw gold, Korea will, is the right one to do. Who wants to buy my nighter? Ottomans, thank you very much. Korea will also buy my last nighter. Anyone want to buy horses? I guess I may as well sell it to Korea. Anyone want to buy iron? 41 from Trajan, 20 gold from Korea. How about coal? Anyone up for buying a bit of coal? Ah, Trajan here with the 451 gold. Perfect. So now we can levy Hattusa. I could have actually levied Hattusa here. 
Although, mm, maybe these units aren't strong enough to fight Brazil. But there you go, that's another little bit of error score. So I just need a tiny bit. And maybe, maybe getting a caravel is the thing that I do. So if I'm going to do that, I'll probably sell some Diplo favor next turn. When people have a bit more raw gold. Although Pedro seems to have tons. Uh, Aztecs coming in hot with the 200 gold. Thank you so much. This is the Quick Deals mod, by the way, as well. If you'd like to get it, you can also... Find it on the Steam Workshop, but if you want to see how it works, you could type Best UI Mods Civ 6 into uh, YouTube or Google, and you'll find my video on the Best UI Mods for Civ 6. How's that for uh, shameless self-promotion? I reckon our next tech is Mercantilism, because I want to get those lumber mills and improve my camps if I have any. I was going to get a Caravel. I can probably get it next turn, so we'll see. Um, building a bank in here feels good. I wanted to get an encampment in here, but they managed to settle here and, and kind of affect that plan on me. I reckon I, I, I reckon the city needs a holy site because that's just part of my sort of game plan slash, you know, benefits. And I reckon I'll pop it right there. That's fine. It doesn't need to have high adjacency because it exists to give me just a little trickle of faith and a couple of amenities. Time to... Oh, evangelizing. Evangelizing should get me the error score I need. If I choose my beliefs... Sacred Places is quite good because I have actually a decent amount of world wonders. Cross-cultural dialogue is good for the science. I could go for World Church to make up for my weakness in culture um, and then spread my religion. It would give me a use for all my faith. Tithe, I think, is less necessary now. I think Tithe is much better early game. I think if I was going to go for a yield, I think it would be culture here in this category. Yeah, let's grab World Church. I need the culture to make up for the lack of culture that I have in my empire. And then I feel like scripture is actually going to be pretty handy here for that little bit of extra religious pressure to keep people's religion off my back. So we'll grab that. We'll lock those in. That's a little bit of culture. It's not a huge amount, but if I go ahead and refresh the UI, I'm getting 12.2 culture from beliefs. And I pretty much have all of my cities converted. So I could potentially start looking around here and maybe converting someone. Who owns the religion of Sikhism? So that's actually a French religion. So I could potentially move in on my ally over here, um, Montezuma, and convert his cities. And I think that's what I'll do real quick. I'll, I'll pop out a few missionaries right before the end of the era with as much f faith as I can. Ah, I could use Giovanni here to get a free bank. I feel like I'm missing out on the bank. I feel like I, feel like I would be better off if I just parked it over here in my capital. And in fact, I'm going to just kind of snake in here. And grab that. We have secured ourselves a golden age. So I'm happy about that. I don't think I need an inquisitor. Uh, I will. 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 I will need an inquisitor. Right. Harvest here to finish the dam. And then get to work on the river valley. So it's only a 22 turn build now. Which is perfect. Lovely. There's a little bit of extra error score that we didn't quite need. But the more important thing here is the plus one food to all of our farms for every adjacent farm. And the extra production on our pastures. Because we do actually have a fair amount of pastures here. We've got one here. We've got one here. We've got one here. There's another one over in my capital. And I want to say there's like one more hiding away somewhere inside my empire. Uh, maybe I was wrong. Yeah, I've got four. So that's like pretty decent. And now these farms. Like look at this farm in the middle. That's seven food on that one farm like my capital growth is insane it has a ridiculous food surplus 34 food per turn it's an insane amount what can what can be bought here let's have a look who's offering luxuries Ooh, a couple of luxuries going for sale here i'll grab them all thank you amenities 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 do i have any room i don't think i have any more room for great works yet and um, i have an archaeological museum that's something worth considering ah uh, what happened here <sighs> Ooh, the flood has come. That's not good. That means we need to get to flood barrier ASAP. All right, chemistry, computers. Boom, boom. Beeline. Make it happen. Start converting Thalacopan. Boom, legless dinosaur. Starting to get a foothold in here. Not much, I'll admit, but the beginnings. The beginnings of a little chunk of pressure. Um, yeah, I, 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 think, I think we do chop here. We do, do a chop. Boom. That's 100 production towards the Ruhr. That's only two turns worth of production. But then that leaves us with the ability to place more mines in this city, which will get boosted from the, 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 the Ruhr Valley. Like everything is kind of coming together the way that we want it to. Let's convert Tlacopan again. Should get us almost over the line. Yeah, one or two more spreads will do the job here in Tlacopan. A lot of my cities are pumping out actually very, very good pressure. Um, plus three. I think there's a bit of a critical mass of uh, Sikh religious pressure over here. 
Finally able to buy my stupa in Tokyo. Excellent. Tons of faith coming in. Hojo is actually looking a bit saucy here. I'm not loving it. Um, May move an archer and a man at arms over here to help protect this city. He's looking a little bit too saucy for me, bye. A little bit too saucy. There's mercantilism. Excellent. I can now build lumber mills on jungle. I like to call them jungle mills, personally speaking. Kind of rolls off the old tongue there. And Tlacopan has been converted. Excellent. It's another city now. No longer... Where did this barb camp come from? How... Who, why are you here? I, have to buy, I don't want to buy a unit to kill you. I had a line infantry somewhere, I feel like. It was a musketman. Uh, we'll just... We'll, we'll, let it, we'll let it be, right? Golden age-wise, pretty much everyone's in a normal or golden age, which is eh, nothing I can do about that. Let's see, I have good options. I have Hicks Hicksun Tracones, but I'm not settling. I reformed the coinage for extra gold. I don't have that many trade routes. Campus District Science Adjacency provides production. Now, that is a little bit attractive to me because basically every city that I care about has a campus. So Heartbeat of Steam definitely feels like the right choice to me. Um, and then Two Arms. I think we kind of ruled out going to war. I think going to war could be kind of fun. We could do it. We could, there are consequences of us going to war. It will slow down how quickly we win the game. Like, there are consequences, but it is fun. You know, if, if I want to play fully into my economic decisions, right... I would 100% pick Heartbeat of Steam. But if I wanted to do something warlike, I would pick the Cass's Belly one. This game feels a little bit more like a Heartbeat of Steam game to me. So we'll just get that 10% production towards Wonders and the extra production from our science adjacency. Now keep in mind that that production is based on the adjacency after it has been doubled with the philosophy card. So this is worth 6 production here, 6 production here, 6 here, 10 over here, 6 here. And yeah, it's just, it's just like, it's a crazy amount of production. Like if I come in here and I refresh this city, it's getting 10 production from its campus, which is feckin' deadly. Enlightened rationalism could be a good card to pick up. I'll, I'll, I'll grab it and see. I'll see if it's any use. After that, I'll go ahead and pick up civil engineering and then we'll make a decision. Possibly time to trade again. And who do I want to trade with? I think I wanted to see if I could trade with Geneva, actually. Because um, I believe they had... They had an envoy. I really want to get suzerain of them because I'm missing out on so many. So much science here from not being suzerain of them. But I did just get my chancery, so I am earning a lot more envoy points, which is a big deal. I'll get to work on my commercial hub now in my capital. It's only a four-turn build. And for the sake of it, I'll also place my theatre square. Just so I have all the things I want to build locked in and, you know, priced cheaply. Do I want to get an art museum or do I want to get an archaeological museum? I feel like archaeological museum is better to go for if I want to make catch-up culture. Art museum is better if you're snowballing uh, on the great people generation front. I would like to place the commercial hub in here too. More trade routes, I think, is always useful. So I'll get the archaeological museum and then the commercial hub. Finally got our madrasa in Alepsa. We'll get the holy site next. I'm already stealing from Toronto, so I reckon it might be good to look for something else to steal. I reckon a few, and I, 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 maybe I'll use this spy defensively. Have, have people been stealing? I don't think people have been stealing from me. And I think the best person to steal from tech-wise, I'm actually allied with both people who I could steal technology from. I guess I'll just put this lad on counter-spy somewhere. Which city makes the most amount of money in my empire? Looks like it's going to be my capital. Yeah, my capital makes the most money. So I'll throw you over into Cairo and use you to, to defend my commercial hub. Mega colossal eruption in my capital. It killed three populations, but that didn't actually happen in my capital because it was Alepsa that was damaged. My capital survived unscathed because I have Liang there. Let's just retreat this archer away. Mm, more flooding is coming. That's not very good. It's not very good at all. I, I don't like that. City center will also flood in the near future. Yeah, I think I think I need to just work. Um, I think I just need to work campus research grants in this city to try to accelerate my way through the tech tree until we can get to flood barriers. Which city would be easier to convert? This one has 2,800 pressure. This one has 2,300. So Tenochtitlan would be easier to convert here. We'll get our little uh, missionary boys on that. And I'll start getting some apostles. Hopefully, hopefully with good promotions. Oh, Toronto is dealing with a bit of flooding as well. It's a 63% success chance on siphon funds, and that's why I always go for gain sources first. You want that really, really high chance to succeed on your mission. 
Oh, we are potentially flipping one of Eleanor's cities here, which is quite nice, considering she's the one who usually does that. We got our bank in Jeddah, and as much as I want to be building a stock exchange for that delicious, delicious gold, the problem is that this has a power load, and I want to buy as much time as possible before the next phase of sea level rise, because I would like to save these two districts if I could. There's a little bit of flooding in my capital too. I only need a little bit of anti-flooding measures, right? So if I delay a little bit, Sure enough, my empire is a bit weaker, but I end up saving myself a bit of trouble in the long run. I think the big thing I lack right now is a entertainment complex to improve the amenities in my capital area. The amenities are quite good right now, getting even the 20% boost in a lot of my cities. But I do feel like an entertainment complex again, just get another one out. Um, and spreading those amenities a little bit. Like this entertainment complex hits these five cities, so I would just need one more to hit these three. That feels like a fairly, you know, mild sacrifice in order to get that many positive amenities. In Gralos, I think it's time to go ahead and get ourselves a campus. There is a plus three campus right there, which is probably the best one we're gonna get in this city. And I reckon this is gonna be like a one district city. I don't think we can really justify much beyond a single campus in here. Um, but even so, a single campus will do the trick. Still working on converting Tenoch Titlan. And boom, there it is. We got it. So we've kind of cut a bit of a wall through the um, Sikh religion. However, that's not quite good enough because I am going to need to get myself a couple of Inquisitors just to keep my religion secure inside my own territory. We've got the commercial hub in the capital. Let's grab the market for the extra trade route and the extra little bit of gold as well. And I was recently just talking about getting myself an entertainment complex over here in this western side of my empire. So I feel like getting an entertainment complex in Tokyo uh, fits really nicely into that plan. I'm going to go ahead and counter spy on the commercial hub because that's where the AI is most likely to send people. And I'll actually use Giovanni de Medici to finish the bank and market in here instantly. And with those two extra great work slots, I'll go ahead and have a look uh, and see if there's anyone selling any great works, like maybe sculpture. What about writings? Writings are quite cheap and they're worth two culture each. Landscape is quite valuable. It's only three. Um, it's three culture each. I think I'll just get the writings because they're cheaper. I'll buy both of those. Um, 30 goals per turn seems pretty good for two or for four culture per turn for the rest of the game, considering the, the gold is only temporary. And again, I'm going to avoid building anything that will use power just for now. As much as I want to be getting my research labs online, I'll probably try to just build them up to where they're almost finished. Right, let's go ahead and Inquisition here. Perfect, we've eliminated this religion. I think we can start to work on Zoxialco now. I don't have to say the city's name. Um, it has a lot of religious pressure, but we've already eaten into a quarter of it. Sempoala has a lot less pressure, but if I can start just taking out a little bit and create like a little muscle of pressure here that's within range of me, you can see already I have positive pressure in some of these cities in the back line of my empire. Zokchikchalko, right, we'll convert, we'll convert and convert. We've almost broken the pressure in here, perfect. We've got civil service, which gives us a governor title, quite happy about that. I think we do have a couple of archaeological museums, so I feel like getting natural history here would be a great way to continue to expand our ability to generate culture. Because with those great uh, works of uh, those relics or um, artifacts, with those artifacts, we'd actually be able to get a ton of culture. I do think it's time to hang up autocratic legacy. And instead, I may plug in Vissel Bank in here. That'll make my trade routes to my allies quite a bit better. Rationalism is only worth seven science right now which really isn't much trade confederation isn't bad either and am i even really building builders do i need public works anymore like i could pull that out i don't need builders anymore i feel like vissel banking and trade confederation together makes it so that my empire is like extremely efficient for international trading which is good because i have two strong allies that i can trade with and i'm strong enough myself to where i'm not really threatened by anyone else so this is a big moment for our empire we just got research labs but it's unfortunately hamstrung by the situation we're in. We have flooding in our empire. We have to make a decision. Do we let these tiles just die? Or do we power hard for computers and pray that we can build flood barriers in time to save this commercial up in this holy site, as well as whatever could potentially go here? Now, we could, we could opt to just be like, nope, don't care about those tiles. They're dead to me. It's over. We lose two tiles. But here's the thing. 
we're a tall empire. We don't have a lot of tiles. And this is a commercial hub. This is a trade route. There's not a whole lot of room in my empire to be losing tiles. So that's kind of why I'm hesitating here. I know it seems a bit silly to be like him and Han over only a couple of tiles. But I actually do think it might be worth it to delay just a little bit until computers to be able to get it. But the problem is my research labs are so good. And I'm now heading into the phase of the game where I can start to get these as well with Taruga. Mm, that makes it a whole lot more complicated. The fact that I'm able to start getting up to level three envoys with a lot of these scientific city-states is actually making this a really difficult decision for me. The sheer amount of science that we could generate by doing this might actually be offset by the issues we face. And we could, theoretically, if I could get two more governor titles, if I could get another governor title from ma nationalism, I could promote Magnus with industrialist, which would mean that we'd produce less CO2 overall. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for industrialist on Magnus. I'll go ahead and reassign Magnus to the city of Amazon, where I'm generating all of my electricity. And then I'll assign Victor back over to Jeddah. And we just power hard for research labs because they're worth so much science. Go ahead up to six envoys with Hattusa. Now, a single research lab should be worth like 15 science, which is absurd for me. I'm surprised that there's no more wildlife spawning. Like, I know dinosaurs have gone for a while, but I was hoping to see a few more wildlife spawns. Let's re-up our alliance with Eleanor. I'm kind of quite happy that I was able to like diplomatically figure out this game and manage to make it so that no one ever really declared war on me in a way that was like actually a threat to me. So we're full steam ahead on research labs now in nearly every single city. And the Ruhr Valley isn't far behind. This is what I could have used, actually. I could have used Heathen Conversion to, to keep the dinosaurs around. Oh, I should have thought about that. Maybe I should have founded my religion earlier into the game. I can actually use this lad still to do that job. I'm pretty sure, like, he should highlight the tiles that I can convert barbs on now. Although maybe maybe they got rid of the radar, the, 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 holy, the holy unit radar. I guess I have two Heathen Converters now. That's always the danger of recruiting two apostles in the same city on the same turn is that they'll both roll the same promotions 100% of the time and it's possible for those promotions to all three of them be shit <laughs> and that's just that's just the dice roll that you play with here well let's let's go ahead and see if we can find um find some barbs to convert because I, I don't think it's worth it to use these guys for anything else renew our research alliance with our friend montezuma I don't know some people. Some people tell me that the um, if you buy apostles in the same city, they don't roll the the same promotion. But I've seen it way too many times. Like I have three thousand hours in this game, and I've seen apostles roll the same promotion from the same city more than I have seen the different the other, uh, seen it the other way around or whatever. All right, let's convert Sempuala. Perfect, and Teotitran. Lovely. It's finally time to start stealing gold. Lovely. Oh, ongoing competition. Appease the gods. Do we want another promotion for our soothsayers? I'd say it's an option to go for. What have we got to sacrifice? Not much, really. Musketmen, crossbows. I'd have to spend some time building something. And I don't think it's worth it when there's only 14 turns in it. I'll have a, I'll have a think about it when I finish some uh, research labs about whether or not I want to do it. 100% production towards buildings in which district? Actually, I wish this had come 10 turns from now. Because then I could have banned buildings and campuses when I'd finished all my um, my research labs. Which would mean I would basically lock in my science lead for the rest of the game. That's unfortunate. I'll just vote city center like three times, three or four times. And I'll say that uh, scientific city states should be the one that we trade with. Lovely. We managed to uh, miss out on that. That's okay. At least we get our research labs a couple turns sooner with the 100% um, production towards campuses. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just not my, it's not the outcome that I wanted is the thing. Oh, Bordeaux has flipped independent. I wonder who it's going to uh, start flipping towards. Okay, Poland, thanks. Progress towards nuclear program. We've also got flight now. It's flipping, it's flipping to me another city. We're actually stealing another city in this game. Incredible. We have research labs now. Now this is where things are going to get a little bit scary because that 21 turns here is really not a lot of time to get to flood barriers. So it, it may well be that we're losing a few tiles here. Taruga was just killed by Japan. And in my opinion, that's cause enough for war. 
So I reckon it's aerodrome time. We get a few bombers, we blast them out, we liberate Taruga. I'm going to add that proposal um, and start producing a military. AT crews, I think, should be good enough with the support of the occasional bombard to take on Japan. So I will be declaring war on them because Taruga is a scientific city state and I'm in range to make a difference there. Plus, it's just worth a lot to be able to, to win an emergency. Um, yes, yeah, so let's do a mixture of AT crews and bombards and start start getting ready for a bit of a war here. It's a liberation war, so not quite a conquest. I'm going to vote up this city-state emergency. I'll put uh, four. I'll put three votes into it. I think three should be enough to help it cross the line. All right, there we go. That's it. We are now at war with Japan, and it's the same turn that we finished the Ruhr Valley. Um, so we've got a, quite a little bit of rearranging to do this turn in our empire. The first thing we're going to do is come into Amazing, where we finished the Ruhr Valley, and find every mine within range that we can take and put it in this city, because the production value of a mine inside the city is massive. Um, we'll also take these three farm tiles eventually. We'll very quickly grab ourselves a builder. Um, actually, no, we won't, because we're at war. I will buy a builder in here just to get those improved. Should have bought that in my capital. It would have been plus one build charge. Would have been slightly better. Um, I think what I want is, I think I want an observation balloon. And I also want this city to produce me a little bit of bombards. Bombards and AT crews are going to be what we use to fight this war. We may actually be able to push west far enough to take Nagoya and Osaka from him as well. Which would give us access to the water and maybe a few extra luxuries. Eleanor is still trying to convert back some of these cities, which is kind of annoying because I've invested a lot of faith in trying to spread my religion over here. And it's gone pretty well, actually. Like, all things considered, I've converted five of Montezuma cities. Ah, this apostle is dead now. It's going to delete him so he doesn't get pillaged and give them a benefit. Ooh, that is an Eleanor debater. And we have access to railroads now. Let us just retreat with you because I don't want to get you killed. I have another governor title. I think it might be okay to pick a new thing. I think I'll grab Garrison Commander because the possibility of taking Embrasier here is kind of cool. Hmm, Japan is threatening my cities with a relatively strong unit. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come into here in quick deals, sell off my luxuries for ideally as much gold as I can get. I'll even sell off a little bit of my coal as well. And then I'll pop into Tokyo and go ahead and buy myself an AT crew to give the city 86 combat strength so that they can't really put a threat on the city. But you know what? On the eve of war... I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.